If you run into enemies in life, chances are you're going the right way. And in any narrative, those antagonists need to be characterized somehow. So, considering just how many of these rivals Yuri on Ice manages to squeeze into its 12 episodes while still making enough of them so memorable, it must have been doing something right. Digi, in his great video on Yuri on Ice, mentioned that he felt that the time spent on these side characters took away from the main trio of Yuri, Yurio, and Victor. I think that's a valid complaint, but while watching most of these performances, I never got that feeling myself. Perhaps more people would have cared for these side characters had more time been spent on them, but part of why I liked them was because we didn't. Collectively, it was a good chunk of the show, sure, but individually, we got maybe a few short scenes outside of the competition and then a few performances. And let's be honest, if you're watching an anime on ice skating, you probably want to see some ice skating. But what I think works about this method is that by and large, the characterization is done through these performances. It's efficient. Instead of taking more time to get to those performances through character-revealing dialogue or flashbacks, while we do get some of those, most of them happen during the fun scenes. Georgi is one of my favorites of these side characters, and I don't think he would have been better if we'd been given more time with them. He gets one line before the competition to announce his existence, then in his two performances, which last about six minutes together, we get a whole story of love, bitter loss, and a cry for forgiveness which ultimately fails just as he does. Was he a complex character? No, but he was memorable, and perhaps more importantly, entertaining in the moment. Yuri and Ice was good with this in general, from the adorable Minami to the proud JJ to, well, I thought Chris shoving his ass into the camera was hilarious, I don't know about you. But I do think this method of efficient characterization can be used for more. To take an example from one of my favorite anime, Chihayafuru is also about a competitive sport, the more obscure Karuta. More than halfway through the first season, Chihaya, who's exceptionally fast at taking cards, is put into a match with Sakura Kanai. Like in Yuri on Ice, she's largely characterized through the competition, and the way she carries her middle-aged self by wearing such vibrant clothing is memorable even though after this match she only has one brief appearance later. Yet despite her brief role, her array of skills defeats Chihaya handily in the first match of the tournament, and though Chihaya has a lot to learn, she's no underdog. Her excellent speed was unable to help her in the end, but the match helped her pick up on a few techniques that go towards her overcoming the recklessness that generally leads to her making mistakes. It's furthered later when some insight inspires her to be more patient, both in her studies, folding into the conflict of that episode, and her own cards of playing, that patience helping her take cards with better timing rather than simple speed. This is tested against yet another minor antagonist, Ririka. Not only is Ririka being a young genius compared against one of the best card to players in the series, but her ability to take cards quickly is compared against the less experienced Chihaya of just a few episodes ago. Not only does it create yet another memorable rival who's entertaining in the moment, but she's used to both show how Chihaya's skills have advanced while also building her towards her even greater rival. But what happens when the series fails to be entertaining in the moment through its antagonist? Now, while Haikyuu does handle its antagonists better later on, the first match against Alba Josai was something of a letdown. They're hyped as being one of the top four teams in the prefecture, yet during the match focuses squarely on our main characters. Haikyuu is generally pretty good at using the matches to further development or characterization of its own cast, but in this instance the characterization of the antagonists suffered for it. Despite the supposed hype of being such a notable team, they fail to leave an impression in the least until Oikawa comes in, as if the author of the manga was noticing the same problem himself. After this, the conflict between teams finally starts to get interesting, and it's over. It might be the fault of the episode director rather than a meaningful decision, but even their drawings lack the presence they have in their second appearance. This does actually end up adding to the narrative, as we find out that Oikawa is integral to the chemistry of the team, as if him working alongside them gives more detail to the designs and shows their strength. But even so, in that moment, I couldn't help but wonder, why did they have to go against these characters right now? Why did they have to sacrifice the characterization of an important team when just about anyone would have sufficed for the character moments we see? In other words, though it was patched up later, they failed to be interesting in that moment. But why does it matter? Well, this idea isn't exclusive to sports anime. The quirky skaters of Yuri on Ice often reminded me of the employees of NASA that would often crop up and recur in Space Brothers. Giving these minor characters their own arcs is not only something I've seen in Ping Pong the Animation, but also in the background of the living quarters of the titular Revias. Whether it's the world of professional ice skating, competitive karta, high school volleyball, the workings of NASA, or the young passengers of a fictional spaceship, these are all different worlds that we're exploring, but characters are world building. Each of the characters in Yuri on Ice has their own nationality, the music they skate to, and the themes of the routine itself. So though it's a version of our own world, it's no less vibrant. Skill matters more for karta tournaments than age or gender, so this aspect of the world is shown to us rather than told by having Chihaya compete against a middle-aged woman in one episode and a ten-year-old not long after, struggling to a degree against both of them. Can it take away from the characters who matter if done improperly? Absolutely, but if the main characters were the only ones to get any focus whatsoever, then these shows wouldn't be nearly as memorable, as worlds we'd be seeing would just feel... empty.